Okay, good evening. We'll call this meeting to order. We're returning from closed session. Anything to report out, Kimberly? Uh, no, the council provided direction to the city's real property negotiators and labor negotiators, but there is no reportable action. Roll call. Vice Mayor Cruz? Here. Council Member Malson? Here. Council Member Campion? Here. Council Member Lampson? Here. Mayor Hewer? Here. So if the council will indulge me tonight, um, I'd like to open this meeting in honor of a member of the community that we lost on January 5th. He passed away in his home early in the morning, and that's our concerned citizen, Al Baldwin. So if you'll join me in a moment of silence in honor of Mr. Baldwin and everything that he's provided to this community. One of the things that, um, for me personally, is that Al was absolutely, when he said, when he really believed in we're a community of character and believed in that, it is because he knew how to disagree without being disagreeable. So it's one of the yeah. things that I really always really appreciated about Al, so I'd like to open this meeting in his honor. Sergeant First Class Sean Patrick Sullivan, join me. So one of the things is that um, Sergeant First Class Sean Patrick Sullivan has been an outstanding leader and exemplary representative of the Signal Corps throughout his distinguished nine-year military career. He graduated from Galt High School in 1998 and enlisted in the Army Reserve six months later. He just recently extended his contract <clears throat> to take him all the way until he's able to retire. He plans to continue to live in Galt with his two children, Austin, 12 years old, and Brooke, seven years old. Upon graduation with honors from basic and advanced training, he was assigned to the 1st Brigade, 91st Division, where he served from April 1999 to February 2006. During his assignment, he was a key member of the communications team, supporting more than 20 field training exercises across the United States. In early 2003, Sergeant First Class Sullivan was mobilized in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. In January 2004, Sergeant First Class Sullivan was deployed to Afghanistan as communications chief for the Office of Military Cooperation Afghanistan. During his time with the 91st Division, he received numerous awards, including the Bronze Star for Exceptional Meritorious Conduct in Service. From February 2006 to September 2011, Sergeant First Class Sullivan was assigned to 5th 
Brigade 75th Mission Command, Training Division G6. <clears throat> Sergeant Sullivan was awarded the Meritorious Service Medal for all his accomplishments while serving with the 5th Brigade 75th Division. From September 2011 to October 2015, Sergeant First Class Sullivan was assigned as a platoon sergeant to the Alpha Company 319th Expeditionary Signal Battalion. In April 2012, he was deployed to Afghanistan for the second time. His professionalism, sound ju judgment, technical expertise, and total commitment to mission accomplishment was unparalleled. Sergeant First Class Sullivan was awarded the Meritorious Service Medal with an Oak Leaf Cluster for his actions. In October 2015, Sergeant First Class Sullivan was attached to Bravo Company 35th Expeditionary Signal Battalion in Aguadela, Puerto Rico, and sent to Iraq in, in support of Operation Inherent Resolve. His actions, outstanding leadership, Dedication to duty, selfless service, and superior performance resulted in Sergeant First Class Sullivan receiving his second Bronze Star with an Oak Leaf Cluster. <clears throat> in September 2016 to present, Sergeant First Class Sullivan has been assigned to the 335th Signal Command. He deployed to Afghanistan in February 2017 in support of Ops Op Operation Resolute Support. Sergeant First Class Sullivan's history of dedicated leadership and distinguished service directly supporting the war fighters and the global war on terrorism are in keeping with the finest traditions of the Signal Corps. For his service, he was awarded the Bronze Order of Mercury. The Galt City Council tonight is honoring Sergeant First Class Sean Sullivan for his distinguished service to our country, and we've asked him to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Sergeant First Class Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, please stand as you are and, and uh, pledge allegiance with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. If you'd like to say anything, you're <laughs> Thank you for all your support. Thank you for your Not big and uh, unpublic, but. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate Galt. It's a great place. I, I'll never move away from, from Galt. I love this place. So great place to raise my kids. I love it here. So thank you for everything you guys do, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Video statement. This meeting of the Galt City Council will be cable cast on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast, Consolidated Communications and AT&T UVerse Cable Systems. The meeting is closed captioned and webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will air Friday, January 19th at 9 a.m. and Saturday, January 20th at 9 a.m. A DVD copy is available for checkout from any library branch. The City Council meeting videos are also archived on the City's website and a DVD copy is available for checkout from any library branch. Agenda approval, additions, and or deletions? Seeing Nothing. Nothing? Nope. Seeing we will move on to presentations. New employee introductions. Armando? Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I'd like to call up Wade Isabel. There he is. Didn't recognize him. All cleaned up. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan Wade Isbell was recently hired as a Parks Maintenance Worker One. Uh, he comes from, from Lockford Springs Golf Course, so he has a little background in, in keeping everything green. Um, he was born in Woodland and went to school in Davis and raised in Davis. We did not hold that against him during the hiring process. Uh, Wade has uh, uh, recently become a big part of this community. He's bought a home here, recently was married, coaches at one of our high schools, and he's really embedded himself as being a Galtonian and really admires this city. So I'm going to let him speak because I know he loves to do that in front of everybody. Uh, so, wait, Isabel. Um, well, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity uh, to be an employee here for the city of Galt. Uh, I have known it since I've grown up, been here at times, and, and, and seen how it's grown vastly in the last number of years uh, and on behalf of my wife and myself we're happy to call ourselves citizens and 
are happy to try and start and raise a family while living here in the city of Galt. Thank you. Welcome. Thank Welcome, you. Uh, council members, our employee uh, was looking forward to this opportunity, uh, fell ill today, and had to go home from work. So we'll reintroduce him at the next opportunity. Thank you. Oath of office. <laughs> you stand right in the middle, turn and face everyone, <laughs> and smile. It's my favorite part of it, being able to do this. Uh, so you've all heard me say this before, and I'll say it again. We're always looking to hire the best and the brightest, and in this case, a world traveler, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I'm going to introduce uh, Lauren Franklin. He's our newest police officer. Lauren is a graduated with a bachelor's degree from California State, of Sa uh, California State University of Sacramento uh, in business, where he um, focused on accounting. Uh, prior to hiring here, he was he worked for as a fare inspector on board the ACE train um, in Stockton. He's uh, got additional work painting a uh, painting business with his uh, father, and so he thought um, with that experience with the train that you know and working with other law enforcement, and seeing the law enforcement out there uh, doing that job, that uh, he knew that this was his calling. And so uh, he actually pursued that. And so we're very, very grateful for him to be here. So, but that's all the information he provided me. Uh, and so I told him, I said, you either come up with something or I'm gonna make it up. So I said, tell me something funny. And I said, and he goes, I don't have anything. And I said, well, well what, uh, what about your cat? You have a cat? That would be funny. You don't look like a cat guy. And he says, well, I have a cat. And I said, well, what was the cat's name? And he says, Kitty. And I said, oh, okay, well, that's kind of funny. He goes, you have a kitty's dead. And I was like, okay, well, there you go. Going to get some laughter. And he said, so well, then tell me something that's not funny. So really, really interesting about this guy is uh, uh, traveled 23 countries. Uh, and I asked him why, and he goes, because I wanted the experience. Um, he lived in Turkey for three months, and he broke his tailbone in Croatia, and I'm not going to tell that story. So... Um, Really interesting guy, really, really pleased that he's here. Uh, welcome aboard. Um, uh, thank you for being part of our family. Uh, you're gonna fit in very, very well. Would you like something, please? I and state your name. I, Lauren Franklin. You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation or, purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and during such time, and during such time as, I am an employee, as I am an employee for the city of Galt, I will faithfully discharge the duties of position of police officer to the best of my ability. I just want to take a couple seconds to uh, express my uh, gratitude for um, accepting me into your community and into the department. Um, I will work my best to um, gain your trust and to uh, protect that trust in the execution of my duties. Um, I feel like my experiences traveling and uh, working on the train, just being exposed to all different kinds of people will um, kind of help me in this capacity as I'll be working with a lot of different people. and. Uh, I've only been here actively for maybe, I think I've worked eight <coughs> shifts, and uh, I've met a lot of great people, and I look forward to uh, meeting all the other great people that I haven't had the opportunity to, uh, to meet yet. 
And uh, once again, I just want to uh, thank you for this opportunity, and I uh, look forward to uh, learning everything about Galt and all the uh, community members. Thank you. Okay. This is Elise Winter Bird Festival presentation. <laughs> Good evening again, Mayor and City Council. I'm here to uh, discuss the 11th Annual Winter Bird Festival. As you see on the screen, uh, this year's uh, bird is a barn owl. It's native to our area. The artist is uh, Veronica Espinoza. Here's the poster, and obviously you can't read that small fine print, so what I did is I, I'm going to go over each one of these presentations individually. So at nine o'clock, we'll start off with the backyard uh, bird safari. Um, we'll uh, be going batty at 10 o'clock, getting a close-up look um, and view of bats. If it's something that interests you, it doesn't interest me, so I'll be like in a different part of the area when that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> then we have uh, conservation ambassadors. So this is a little confusing. A lot of people really like the hands-on with the animals, the exotic animals. Wild Things has changed their name to Conservative uh, Ambassador, so I wanted to make that clear that we're still having the animals, they'll still be there, and um, just not to be confused with the name change. At 12 o'clock is a new tour. California Waste will be touring their facility, uh, excuse me, presentation. Uh, they'll also be doing a tour. Uh, Lisa Klotz, who's in the audience, will be talking about how our uh, recycling can impact our environment and, and going into our streams and going into our native habitat. One o'clock, I know I'm gonna mess this up. Hawks, hooters, and hoots. Honkers. Honkers. I need glasses. I knew, I, I told you I was gonna mess it up up front. <laughs> Sorry, I knew it. Um, so I'm turning <coughs> on, and at two o'clock, our uh, keynote speaker, Paul Bannock, he's an award-winning author and uh, wildlife photographer, specializing in the natural history of North American um, birds with, uh, and habitats. So our tours, from 6.30 to 8.30, our sunrise photo tour. Small group of 12 will be taken out to the wetlands at dawn. Our tall forest and riparian habitat tour. Uh, go on a hike with uh, renowned Dr. John Truchet through remote areas of the Consumers River Preserve. 9 to 11, this is the Cal Waste tour that we talked about. Uh, Mr. Vacareza has opened his doors up so he can tour his facility. It's a great tour. This is our only free tour on on the calendar. Um, if I recommend that to everybody. It, we were actually lucky enough to go on that tour last year, and it's, it's just something that you would never think that would be a great tour, but it, it really is. Um, from nine to one, we'll have the Heritage Oaks Bird Walk and Lunch. And from one to five, Delta Birding Tour with uh, local expert Chris Conrad. From 1.30 to five, this is a small small uh, tour, birds and beer at the barn. That's an exclusive property at the preserve. Your only way you're gonna get out there is on one of these tours. And along with that, from 1.30 to five, you'll have a paint and sip at the barn. And so, to conclude everything, it'll be a 3.30 Staten Island sunset tour. Except for the Cal Waste tour, they're all buses, so if you're you know, everybody's safe, you'll be driven out to the preserve, you'll be brought back from the preserve, so if you're drinking on one of these tours, you have a designated driver. So other activities that we'll have, we'll have free kids craft, we have storytelling by the library, we have retail vendors, and Sacto Mofa will be sending a couple of trucks, Chano uh, Tacos will be one of the trucks that I saw on, the, on their calendar. Ducks Unlimited will be doing a presentation at 12.30 in our aquatic center. They'll be bringing in some dogs, some decoys. They'll be actually in the pool. And then uh, California Customs Trailer and Power Sport will be exhibiting some of their ATVs in the skate park. So as you see there, we have a new location as from last year. It's going to be the Shibola Community Center. One of the reasons that we moved to this location is that you can see we have plenty of parking. We have a uh, dedicated bus pickup in the back at Fairside School. We have city-owned facilities, and why that's important is that it cuts down on our overtime costs. 
we're currently already setting up. There's a big tent sitting in our parking lot. We're putting up banners. We're doing all this work while we're currently working instead of coming in on overtime. When we were at the school district, we would have to come in Friday night, work all Friday night, set up, come in early sun Saturday morning, set up more, then tear everything down Saturday night and get it back out so they could go to school on Monday. Having the city facilities, it'll, it'll allow us to do this during working time and cut back on the overtime cost. So this is what, how the setup's gonna be. We'll have the presentations in the Calway stage in uh, uh, Shibola. You'll have, in here you'll have the kids' crafts uh, that the Kiwanis have donated $500 to. Uh, the Galt Herald, this is uh, a sponsored room uh, for their local advertising. They'll be doing storytelling here. We'll have the local vendors here. California Customs will be having their ATVs and the presentation of Ducks Unlimited. Sacto Mofo will have their trucks out here on the street. Here are all the walk paths to get to everything. I, I really believe that this is a good setup and um, is gonna bring a different aspect to, to our Winter Bird Festival. Our sponsorships, as you can see in 2017, we had $13,000 in sponsorships. We're a little down in 2018. A lot of people have either cut back or not sponsored this year. We're finding that more and more with our, our sponsorships. But the ones who did, uh, Mr. Vacareza again steps up as he does for most of our events. I really do appreciate him. He does so much for this community that he is such a huge part of it. Uh, uh, conservation farms and uh, ranches and SMUD like SMUD has also stepped up as they do in the IDC. And then you see some of the other monetary uh, sponsors down at the bottom. Um, a new sponsor is Cardinal Glass and our local Kiwanis. These are our in-kind sponsors. We're working with both school districts, Consumers River Preserve, as I mentioned, the Galt Herald. Uh, Comfort Inn has uh, donated, a couple of room, or donated a room for our keynote speaker. So uh, thank you, Comfort Inn. Ducks Unlimited and store coaches. A new event to this in conjunction with the Winter Bird Festival is the wine, beer, and food tasting. This is put on by our local chamber. Uh, this event will be Friday night, the night before the Winter Bird Festival. You'll have, uh, for $15, you get uh, wine tasting, beer tasting, and food tasting with live music by Travis Vega. If you pay an additional $15 for a total of $30, you get all those and you get to paint with uh, Nancy Kiawit. You'll be painting a barn owl that night. So you get a little bit of both worlds. Um, that event, the painting will start at 6 p.m. and then the wine, the wine, beer, and food tasting will start at 6.30 and it'll go till 8.30 at night. Uh, for tickets, you can come to the Parks and Rec office or contact the chamber. Um, again, it, I think it'll be a, an event that we're going to grow, and it'll be a good event for you both of us. Or you can do it online, even though I've heard it's a little difficult <laughs> if you're uh, buying more than one ticket. So. This is actually uh, the photo cover of uh, Paul Bannock's book. This is uh, it right here, but I'd be glad to answer any questions <coughs> you have, if you have any now. Any questions? Where's the Cal Waste Tour? At their facility? It will be at their facility. Okay. I noticed there wasn't, there wasn't a map on how to get there. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll give them directions. Okay. Are there any I'm just other? excited and keeping my fingers crossed for no rain. Okay, I've been nervously <laughs> looking at that, and I've been scared to look at it because oh. the last time I saw it, there was no rain on Saturday, yep. so I'm just going to keep that it's, in my mind. That's what it says. Yeah. So, no questions? Okay, thank you. Public comment? I'm going to read the statement. Mm -hmm. Under Government Code Section 54954.3, oops, sorry, my thing covered it. Members of the public may address the council on non-agenda items. Speakers may address city council on any agenda item during consideration of the item. Speakers shall restrict their comments to issues that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council and limit comments to a maximum of five minutes. Please fill out a speaker sheet located on the table inside the entrances to the council chambers and forward the completed speaker sheet to the clerk. Gail Weber. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here to talk about Al Baldwin. Um, the passing of Al Baldwin has left a huge hole in the Galt community. 
Um, I considered him a mentor and a friend. He kind of helped guide me through all this volunteerism I do. Um, he was already always ready to listen and was give me his sage advice. He was also a member of the GCC and who had met with the group the night before he passed. I remember talking to him about all the pictures he had taken and suggesting we set up a Facebook page, Al Baldwin's Pictures. I told him he was being selfish by not sharing all his pictures he had taken. The morning after the meeting at 4.45 in the morning, he had emailed Ralph Cortez, another member of our group, a set of pictures. Uh, we found out later that day he had passed shortly after emailing those pictures. It hit the group pretty hard. Um, he was fine that night. He was joking and laughing. He was the same old self. Um, since the 4th Street Promenade doesn't seem to have an official name yet, I would like to propose to the City Council they consider naming this area in honor of Al Baldwin. It is located in the heart of Galt, and it seems an appropriate place to bear his name. It is close to his home in Tugger Elementary, who is known by Mr. Al, to all the kids. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa Klotz. Good evening, thank you for allowing me to speak with you this evening. My name is Lisa Klotz, and I'm here on behalf of the Galt Sunrise Rotary. On December 16th, the eighth annual Galt Sunrise Rotary held their community dinner, and I wanted to um, report on that. We would like to thank very much the Galt City Council, the city manager, and the police department for allowing this um, event to take place in the Littleton Center and to serve the <coughs> residents of Galt with the biggest smiles we've ever seen. We also want to thank the city staff and the Parks and Recreation Department, in particular, the night and weekend crew that helped us out a lot um, to keep the facilities running. I'd like to share with you Rotary International's four-way test. The test is one, is it the truth? Two, is it fair to all concerned? Three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Four, will it be beneficial to all concerned? We believe this community dinner exemplifies Rotary's four-way test. Each year, Rotary invites the entire Galt community to come break bread with their neighbors. This year, we cooked 105 turkeys, 335 cans of green beans, 229 cans of cranberries, 188 boxes of stuffing, 49 pounds of bacon, 77 dozen rolls, 100 pies, gallons and gallons of gravy, and more pounds of butter went into the mashed potatoes than you really want to know about. In all, over 100 and, uh, 1,100 meals were served at the Littleton Center, and 108 meals were delivered to those who could not attend in person. The leftovers, which there was little, were dropped off at the Hope Harbor Family Service Center of the Salvation Army in Lodi, and any leftover unopened packaged goods were taken to the local Sunshine Food Pantry at the Galt United Methodist Church. With the support of community and volunteers, we all began cleaning those turkeys and preparing them the night before for the 5 a.m. cooking kickoff. These same volunteers prepared and served delicious home-cooked hot meal to anyone who came through the doors. Each year, this event has grown from in the beginning on the first year under 100 meals to more than 1,200 meals now served on-site and delivered to homes. <coughs> this is a true community event. It could not be done without the help of many hands and many organizations, including Cal Waste Recovery Systems, South County Services, Elk Grove Food Bank, The Coffee Shop Bakery, Cafe Latte, It's a Grind, Prime Club Prime Volleyball, The Galt Herald, Rayleigh's, Save Mart, Kevin Harcourt, Y Costa, <coughs> Comfort Inn and Suites, Bruce Salisbury, Chris Newell, Sims Barbecue, Real Men's Club, and Performance Muffler. They gave generously to ensure this community dinner was a success. You will recognize the breadth of support for this event mirrors the amazing assortment of people and business that we have here in Galt. I wanted to bring special attention to Save Mart and Rayleigh's and their customers. Both stores allowed Rotarians to hold food drives within their stores. Customers purchasing items from the store inventory and shelves would drop them off at our collection table. And special attention should be given to the youth of our community. 4-H, Boy Scouts, National Honor Society, Galt District, TPP program, and the Youth Committee all were involved. 
It is because we adults model the behavior we want our children to follow that make Galt an amazing place to live, work, and conduct business. This is a true open arms event to bring our community together, not bound by age, level of income, job situation, or cultural heritage. Community events such as this hold true to the four-way test. These are the things that improve the quality of life in our town and attract new families to Galt as a place they would like to find a home, raise children, develop relationships, and retire. So thank you again for your ongoing support for such a valuable and loved community event. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Reports by City Council members on regional boards, commissions, and committees. We've moved this item up, and I know it's been the holidays, so I, I personally have nothing to report out. Does anyone else? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, as you recall, the council assigned me to work with our finance director, Emily, and our city treasurer to work on an RFP for a new, um, yeah, <laughs> a new audit for, firm. And I believe it went out on the street uh, Monday, didn't it? It's last Monday? A, a week ago Monday. A week ago Monday, yeah. So, yeah, we were working on that. There's a lot of um, emails back and forth. Uh, Sean and, and Emily did a, a great job. And it's out on the street, and we're, the next step is to see what response we get and interview. So. Great, thank you. Kurt? Nothing. Paige? Um, I went to the Youth Commission meeting, and they're working on some things, and we'll be posting the night day breakfast. So please come out at 6 to and again, gets pancakes at the bird festival. Pancake time. Come out at pancake time. Um, safety committee will be meeting next week. And if anybody out there has anything they would like us to put on the agenda, let us know by tomorrow. Okay. So the pancake breakfast is Saturday? Isn't it? Yes. Oh, it's oh, the egg extravaganza. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. <coughs> Information consent calendar. Mayor, I actually uh, have one. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, oh, yes. So I uh, attended on your behalf um, the uh, criminal justice cabinet on January 11th. Uh, it was my first meeting, and it was very, very informative talking about new laws uh, related to criminal justice and the new presiding judge in the Sacramento Superior Court, uh, the Honorable David D. Alba was uh, our new chair, and, uh, but there is nothing new to report on that committee. Well, thank you for attending. <laughs> okay, information consent calendar. Item one is minutes of the regular meeting of December 19th, 2017, and special meeting of January 9th, 2018. Item two, receive and file warrants for period ending January 4th, 2018. Item three, the Galt Beautification Committee bylaws amendments. And item four is the treasurer's report for period ending November 2017. Any discussion? The motion? Move consent. A second. I have a first by Vice Mayor Cruz, second by Council Member Molson. Call for the vote. Vice Mayor Cruz? Aye. Council Member Molson? Aye. Council Member Campion? Aye. Council Member Lampson? Aye. Mayor Hewer? Aye. Passes 5 0 vote. Scheduled matters, we have none. Regular calendar. Finance department. Um, good evening, Mayor Hewer. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I've asked Michelle Neely, our accounting manager, to present this item. Before she gets started, I would just like to comment that uh, <coughs> last Friday was Michelle Neely's 20th anniversary with the city. Uh, she's a valuable part of our department. I'm not sure that we would be able to do what we do without her, and I appreciate her a lot. She's an expert in utility billing, managing that function for many years now, which is why she's going to present this item for us this evening. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. On December 5th, uh, at the Council meeting, Council requested a presentation on reading the utility bills. 
And that was a result of the sewer rate increase that had occurred during that bill cycle. So I'm going to begin by walking you through um, some areas of interest on the bill, um, which now includes that sewer rate increase and meter water service. For the purpose of tonight's presentation, we're going to be talking about residential customers. Commercial customers are actually build their sewer charges based on their water usage. And so the water cycle actually starts on November 15th and is billed through January 15th, and those bills will be coming out on February 1st. So commercial users really haven't been affected yet by that sewer rate increase. So the bills are the same. The areas of the bill are the same. Um, it's just a little bit different for commercial users because of the way that they're billed for their sewer. Now I'm going to try to operate this. There, there we go. So this is what our... Um, <coughs> utility bill looks like in total, but because it's so small, we broke it down into some pieces so you could um, see things a little bit closer up. This is the summary of your current charges on your bill, and you can see that the um, flat rate charges include refuse, um, sewer, which is the sewer upgrade fees, uh, regular sewer, and then storm drain and source reduction and recycling elements. So those are flat rate. They're billed two month cycles, so for your November bill, it was for November, I'm sorry, I think about this. <laughs> it was a November, December bill. It was, it's due January 5th, and it was for December 1st through January 31st charges. You're billed one month in arrears and one month ahead. The water rates were billed for November 15th through, I'm sorry, September 15th through November 15th. So there's a little bit of fluctuation now in the bill where our customers are used to having a flat rate bill. Um, it fluctuates now from cycle to cycle. So that's a little bit of a change in addition to the sewer rate increase. And because this bill was for September, part of it, um, it's a little bit of a higher usage month. So some customers who see an increase in their bill, it's, it's the sewer and also possibly the water that they're looking at. You can see that there are four lines, let's see if I can get this to work, four lines for the sewer upgrade fee and the sewer. Um, this sewer upgrade fee is the old rate, which is 14 days, um, November 1st through November 15th, or 14th, I'm sorry, and this is November 15th through December 31st at the new rate. And then the same for the sewer, um, the 17, 14, is the old rate for those first 14 days, and then the this rate, the 57.39, is for November 15th through December 31st. And that bill again went out on December 1st, and I believe I misspoke before. I said it was for December through January. It's actually November 1st through December 31st, and it's due January 5th. So I apologize for that. A little nervous. Um, let me go to the next page. So with the change to metered water service, we thought it was important to let our customers know um, what period that was for. So if you see here on the red high, uh, underline, we have told them specifically what the metered water is for because it was an adjustment for our customers to go from that flat rate to the metered usage. And because you can only build the metered water usage after it's happened, they're used to being billed, say, for November 1st through December 31st. They're really being billed for September through November for their water. So we wanted to make that clear. So that was noted here. And also, we noted the proration of the sewer under this um, special message, which is on every bill, and we tend to um, keep the bottom half of it the same, talks about how they can, um, when their payment is due and that they can pay online, um, but the top couple lines we use on each bill for different things that might affect that certain bill cycle, and so that's what we used it for during this time. Um, these were from our, um, our, the rate information that Public Works put together. The current wastewater rates were the rates that were in effect from November 1st to November 14th, and then the rates below were in effect from November 15th to December 31st. And this is how we calculated those four lines for sewer, the two for the wastewater, or the SRF, which is called the wastewater upgrade fee, and then the SRF one and two. And then the bottom is for the sewer rates. And, and I want to talk a little bit about, um, I'm going to go back here, and talk about the SRF, the, the upgrades. Um, 
I believe that um, it was desirable that we split these out and had SRF1 and SRF2, but when staff looked at this, um, we realized that, first of all, we were short on time. The rates were approved on November, I think it was the 7th. I'm not sure the exact date, but it was early November. They needed to be implemented for the December 1st billing. And usually, it takes staff a couple of weeks. So we start mid-November and get the bills out December 1st. So we were really short on time on making the changes needed to update our utility billing system. That said, in order to have two, we had the one before, the sewer upgrade fee. In order to split that into two, we would have had to add a record to every utility customer's file. So we have about 7,000 of those. And um, we didn't feel that that was a good use of our time and staff to have them individually touch each one. It could cause human error, resultant human error. So we contacted our programmer and asked them for an estimate and the cost estimate. They could just give us a ballpark at that point was about $5,000. So. At that point, because we didn't really have time to do it in any case, we went ahead with just consolidating the two. And I think it's important to note that if we were to split it out and pay that extra cost, the ratepayers are the ones that would be paying that fee, in essence, in their rate. And it just didn't seem economically prudent to go ahead and, and split that out, spend that extra money when we can track it the way it's set up now with the one and two. And one thing that we talked about doing in order to make it um, obvious to ratepayers what was going on with those two rates is when Public Works does their annual rate notice, it's on their website, and um, they put the um, information about rate increases and so forth on there, that they will put a note under the SRF 1 and 2 loans as to the date when those, those will be paid off, so when the final payment will be due. So what we intend to do is when SRF 1 is, is completed and paid off, that rate's going to go down and it's going to say sewer upgrade rate SRF two only, and it will be only the portion that applies to two. So hopefully that will be clear, be easy to track, and understandable. Obviously, if council wants us to pursue the other, then we can look into that, but um, just it will take a certain amount of time to have our programmers do that as well. We are a contract with a software program that we use on the cloud, and so we hire their programmers to make those changes, and we're kind of limited to their time constraints as well. Michelle? The sewer upgrade fee, the one, the five dollars and six cents. Mm -hmm. Now, what's that? Was that the SRF one prior that, to? Well, that was the existing. It was a wastewater treatment plant upgrade fee that was implemented. I'm not sure the year. Do you remember, Steve? So 2012. Yes. And actually, those rates are on this schedule here, so you can see that um, it was eleven dollars and three cents per month. And so that, that's so half, half a month, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, this water graph, we wanted to show you the graph that's on the bill now that we implemented the water meters approximately May of 2016 for the majority of our customers. So it's kind of now, nice now that we've gone through that whole year, we're able to see the comparisons from year to year on the customer's bills and they can see um, how that's going, which is, we've had those graphs on there forever and never had anything in them, so it's kind of. Um, payment coupon, um, customers can mail this in with their bill or, or with their check, or they can drop it in the drop box. And the scan line, just in case anybody ever wondered, is it helps us key in the payments. They just automatically scan in all the information, so that saves some time. We also allow our customers to pay on the website. They can pay over our phone system. They can have their payment automatically deducted from their checking account. And with that program, they can choose to pay the full amount on the due date, or if it would help them with their budgeting, they can split it up and pay half on one month and half on the other, which I think helps a lot of our customers. A lot of the ones that do sign up for that automatic payment use that um, option. This is just showing that we um, do gather some information, hopefully, from our customers. Um, they're not, there's a few of them that actually use this functionality, but um, we request the updated phone and email information, and the phone information helps us with our delinquency notifications. So if a customer is going to get a 48-hour notice, if we have their phone number, we can call through our phone system, and that saves Public Works the time and effort of going out and hanging that notice on the door. So, and it lets the customer know, gives them a message, so um, we encourage them to keep that information current. 
Any questions? Questions? And Michelle, you, you mentioned that uh, when we come back annually to, um, or when Public Works comes back annually to, um, I, I guess either identify because not we we don't we won't have rate adjustments every year because some of them we've taken an action to give a multiple year based on the CPI, correct? Yes. Um, prior to the recent water and wastewater rate increases, we actually had a CPI adjustment annually for a five year period. When we redid the water rates two years ago, um, we uh, built in a, a new start on that clock, but there was no increase for this year in that we just enacted it in the middle of this past year. Uh, and with the sewer rates, it's on a set schedule. It's not tied to an index. It's stepped up over a five-year period. So uh, two of the three things went away, and then the third one that we would typically put on an annual uh, uh, escalator uh, by contract is our Cal Waste Franchise Agreement. And uh, we're in the process of negotiating a possible extension to that, and so they have not as of yet requested an annual for this upcoming year. Um, and I know that uh, when we did all the utilities, um, that was done uh, generally at the same meeting, and now to, do, are we still on that same schedule, or are we falling out of that? Yeah, well, in 2012, shortly after I got here, one of the first packages that we brought to council was uh, a delegation of authority to automatically make that so with 30 days prior notice to council and our customers uh, of the CPI index right. adjustments. Uh, but with the new rate adjustments, we're kind of moving away from that model. But typically, that was effective March 1st, so we'd start notifications in February. So where are we going forward at this point? Well, we've got, uh, we will still be on a CPI uh, again next year for the following four years for water. Sewer uh, is no longer indexed to the CPI. It's just five set steps. Uh, for the next five years, and then we'll have to bring something back to council at that what time. What is the anniversary date on those, then? Uh, typically, we set those for March 1st. Um, okay, so it's, we're still... Yeah, we, we kept the that. same anniversary okay. date in general. Okay, okay. Will, that, will there be something brought to council uh, for public discussion or just for information purposes? Uh, we typically would uh, do a pass-through memo to council on what's planned and notify our customers uh, with council's uh, prerogative to request that it be brought to council or not. Okay. Yeah, the ordinance and the resolutions allow us to do it, but uh, council asked for 30 days prior notice with the option to bring it forward. And something we have committed to do uh, commencing with this next year is to, uh, with the budget process, is to give you a look at what our reserves are looking like, what our revenues versus projected uh, uh, fee increase revenues, how, how they're tracking uh, reality versus projections. Uh, so you have some decision-making ability and say, listen, we'd like to talk about that before you do the next one, or we'd be making a recommendation perhaps not to or only implement a part of <coughs> the maximum rates that were adopted depending on how we're looking. Thank you. Paige? Tom? Uh, just one quick comment or question. The different payment options, are they readily available to the public someplace, website? or? Interesting that you would ask that. Um, we actually hand out a flyer when they sign up for a service that has that information on it, and most recently on payment date, <coughs> which... We tend to be very busy on that day, so um, we designed, uh, updated our flyer, and we everyone that came in on payment due date and waited till the last minute, we handed them the flyer to give them a little bit more information on what their options were to pay. How, okay, how I, I'm one of the ones, I, I pay monthly. The city always seems to, you know, they'll take my money. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a comment. So I, I pay monthly, and, you know, some people will actually have a <clears throat> higher cable bill. You know, when you put it in that kind of perspective, rather than get hit with a big bill every two months. Mm -hmm. And we do budgeting. let them know that they can also, if they don't want to sign up for the automatic debit, they can definitely pay us half yeah. each month. So we let our customers That's why I made the comment. Well. The city will take the money. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I have a public, public comment. Rick Walters. Which, which slide? It's, it's 
It's this one right here. If you'll put it, it up, I can flip the, to uh, it. Where it shows the 1062, the yeah, 947. I'll, I'll have to set the timer a different way. Hold on just a moment for me, please. That was good, thank you. I, a lot of my questions were answered. But I have one more or two. Can you, yeah, bring the, uh, sorry, yeah. We'll get you there. Okay, which one did you want? That, one, right. that one. Okay, that you got one. it, thank you. That one right there. Okay, where, where you see 947, 1062, so on and so forth. Um, I'm getting ready to pay SRF1 off. So if that goes away, what are your calculations going forward in uh, 2019? Can anybody tell me that? That's one. Now, if I pay off SRF1 and number two, then your calculations are based on the O&M of $38, right? Instead of $63. Whatever the difference is. I, I think what you're saying is that you plan or are I'm, I'm talking planning. about paying off SRF loan, loan one. Right. Then your bill would drop by $10.62. Right. You pay off SRF loan two, then your bill would drop by $15.29. Correct. So there was another component so, to that question? So, yeah, the second part of that question is that you calculated that. See that far right column where it says A plus B plus C plus D? Well, that's no longer $63 oh. for calculation. And I think that Mr. Winkley's doing the math, but it would be the 63.15 minus the 10.62 minus the 15.29, wouldn't it? Yeah, 37.24 if you paid both off. 37.24. So, so then in March 2019, uh, the increase would not be three dollars and forty-eight cents. It would be two dollars going forward, approximately, because you're you're calculating on um, thirty-eight dollars as opposed to sixty-three dollars. Is that correct? The the um, I, I, Mr. Winkler, correct me if I'm wrong, but the increases or the change in the rates were not calculated on the loan. The loan amounts are static, are they not? That's correct. So in the future four years of, of stepped rates, you would still just subtract the 1529 and the 1062. So the base rate would continue to go up some, but still be reduced if you paid off early by the SRF 1 and 2. So the calculation would still be, uh, the interest would be, the 5.5% would be based on the 63.15 or $38? Well, the, if you requested to pay off early, we would do the present value of all future payments remaining, right, right. Uh, and you'd pay that off. Then these two figures, which include interest, would drop off. So then it, the 5.5%. So the, the remaining increase would continue to go up, up on the remainder of the bill, but right. it's not a static 5%. It's 5% oh, right. of, the, of the total, but SRF1 and SRF2 are fixed, so there's a variable in the future operating cost. So I, I, Mr. I want, Walters, this is public comment. If you have questions, staff would be ha happy well, to I've been, with you I've outside been, of the meeting. I've, I've been uh, negotiating back and forth here trying to get some kind of an idea, okay. so I figured I'd come so, here because... I, I don't understand. Oh, I would on. ask that you set an appointment with staff to go over your individual bill. I have. Do you have public comment that you'd like to make? Yeah. Uh, also, um, it looks like um, the CPI, bear with me for a second, please. I have everything here, but I don't see it. SRF, um, here it is. Okay, I got the uh, payment schedule back, and it shows a CPI interest on the SRF2 loan of $353,328.08, and I'm curious as to what the heck that's for. Is that being deducted on our bill? Is there a place for it on the bill? Is it not on the bill? Is 
So I have a lot of questions because I was told that the CPI is not part of the equation. Uh, I'm not clear what you're asking or what the original document that well, you're referring to is. It shows a, it shows a, a $353,000. Okay. Is that being charged to the rate payers? That, that is the amortization schedule for the SRF loan. So that tells us what are our annual loan payments to the State Water Resources Control Board. And that loan amount was included in the uh, rate study that was done so that we would have sufficient funds to pay the loan. Um, I think that maybe it would be helpful, as the mayor indicated, if we sat down and talked about this offline. Our group would like to sit down and talk to you about this because okay. nothing makes any sense about what's going on. So if you can submit, if you can make an appointment and sit down and talk. Would I sit and, would I sit and talk to you? And then if there's still an issue, you know, if you still have questions or there's still an issue, you, know, you can contact the city manager and we can resolve that. Do you have any public comment? Because otherwise, <coughs> these are just questions that are best dealt with staff outside well, the meeting. Well, I, I would suggest next time that you open it up for these kind of uh, comments and discussion because this doesn't help anybody and I want it to be out for the public to understand everything. The council's not, you're not letting other people know what's really going on. And that's where all the problems come from. That's well, no, my I, comment. That's, that's, that's my right. comment. Okay. Thank you. OK, no further questions. Public Works Department, subject, capital improvement program, status update, October 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2017. Mr. Winkler. Madam Mayor and Council Members, uh, this is our second quarter of the fiscal year report. Uh, and as in your written handout uh, packet, uh, we've got four projects that were completed in the last three months of the second quarter. And uh, we've got four active construction phase projects, including uh, not yet started construction, but has been awarded as our South Galton Safe Routes to School and Rehabilitation Project, which has several million dollars of SACOG and state funding in it to uh, assist uh, with uh, a large uh, number of streets will be affected, particularly in the older parts of town, uh, infill sidewalks, uh, new bike lanes, new and improved bike lanes, uh, signage, and some pedestrian safety uh, enhancements uh, will be all be part of that. And so there'll be more, more information coming out. Uh, right now, the project is scheduled to start construction on or about March 1st, but we are continuing to discuss with the contractor. Uh, they might uh, be interested in an accelerated start date, so more information to follow, but that's going to be a good project uh, that will sort of be our flagship construction project for this next summer. Um, we uh, also uh, are uh, in the midst of uh, completing the uh, new deep well at the industrial water treatment plant, phase two. Uh, Phase one was to drill the hole and develop it, and now we're hooking up all the plumbing and putting the pumps and motors in and uh, getting all the control systems up to speed with the goal of having that well online before summer peak. So we're uh, uh, looking forward to that as well and uh, other projects here that are underway. And then we've got uh, four projects that are currently in the planning and environmental clearance phase, and we'll be bringing uh, award recommendations uh, after receipt of bids uh, in the near months ahead. But um, one of the projects that is, remains near and dear to our heart is the 4th Street parking lot and open space project, which is different than the 4th Street complete streets project. This would be the rest of the open space and any fence beautification and landscaping of the areas that we haven't already touched. Uh, we have uh, some limited CDBG funds, <coughs> community development block grant. Uh, that uh, they're requesting that we uh, put on an accelerated expenditure curve so that by the end of the calendar year uh, that we will have the next phase completed. And so we'll actually be um, some of the comments that we listen to carefully from the community where they'd like a little more involvement and in knowing what's going on and having some input. So we're actually going to do a couple of public workshops as part of that outreach process uh, with, uh, with our design consultant uh, on what, uh, what the rest of the open space um, concepts might be and some of the cost implications for that and get some community input along the way as to is there a preferred option and then obviously we'll be bringing those recommendations to council as well so um, we've got a lot of a lot of projects going uh, also of note and we've got two council members on the library ad hoc committee uh, we continue forward with the uh, library um, uh, uh, final design uh, we're actually presenting this friday uh, to the friends of the library and Council members are welcome to, uh, to attend that. Uh, it'll be a similar presentation to what was presented uh, a couple of months ago to the 
to the uh, uh, county library committee um, uh, to make sure that our local uh, sponsors and patrons are on board as well. And then we're uh, working, and I think city manager has probably br briefed you uh, on some concepts for city hall expansion, and we've got some uh, preliminary uh, plans uh, that, uh, that are recently received and working on cost estimates so that we can uh, build some uh, near-term improvements to facilitate some customer service issues, some security issues, and some other things. So we've got a, a lot in the hopper, and uh, we'll be trying to produce most of these uh, in the next calendar year ahead. Be happy to answer any questions you might have. Questions? Questions? No. Okay. I'm good. Communication? I don't have any tonight. Okay, adjourn the city council and convene to the Galt Successor Agency. Galt Successor Agency roll call. Uh, oh, board member. Yeah. Board member Cruz. Here. Board member Molson. Here. Board member Campion. Here. Board Member Lampson. Here. Chairman Hewer. Here. No public comment? I have none tonight. Information consent agenda. The minutes of the January 17th, 2017 meeting and any successor agency warrants. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? So moved. Move. Second. second. <laughs> Tag. <laughs> I'll do the second. Motion by Council Member Campion, second by Vice Mayor Cruz. Call for the vote. Board Member Cruz. Aye. Board Member Molson. Aye. Board Member Campion. Aye. Board Member Lampson. Aye. Chairperson Hewer. Aye. Passes 5 0 vote. Um, subject recognized obligation payment schedule for July 2018 to June 2019. <clears throat> Emily? Uh, we're once again going to have Michelle Neely present this item. As you can tell, she wears many hats and does it very <laughs> well. Good evening again. So in June of 2011, the governor signed law which abolished every redevelopment agency within the state. This law was subsequently amended in 2012 and 2015 by additional legislation. And since that time, the successor agency has made various decisions and taken actions inclusive, inclusive of adopting recognized obligation payment schedules, or ROPs which is a list of all enforceable obligations. With the last drops for the 2017-18 fiscal year, the format was modified to include a full 12-month period. The ROPs before you is for the period beginning July 1st, 2018 through, July, through June 30th, 2019. This ROPs includes enforceable obligations including debt payments, administrative costs, professional services, settlement payment to the Consumers Community Services District, and repayment to the City of Galt for prior loans related to RDA projects. Adoption of the ROPS will authorize the successor agency to forward the schedule to the Oversight Board for approval, after which the ROPS will be submitted to the required agencies, including the State Department of Finance. This will allow the agency to continue to receive redevelopment property tax trust fund monies to pay approved obligations. Failure to submit the ROPS by February 1st will result in civil penalties and a reduction in the administrative allowance to the city. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Thank you, Michelle. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll move to approve. Second. Motion by Council Member Paulson, <coughs> second by Council Member Campion. Call for the vote. Board Member Cruz? Aye. Board Member Molson? Aye. Board Member Campion? Aye. Board Member Lampson? Aye. Chairperson Hewer? Aye. Passes 5 0 vote. <clears throat> Adjourn the Galt Successor Agency and reconvene to the Galt City Council. City Clerk's Report. We have an appointment tonight of a council member to the Public Safety Committee. At the City Council meeting on December 19th, Vice Mayor Cruz asked to step down from his appointment on the Public Safety Committee. Currently, Council Member Lampson is uh, serving on the committee and there's a vacant seat. Have any volunteers? Well, yeah, we tried to do this last meeting, but yeah. Tom wants it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do I have a there motion? You go. <laughs> Nominate Tom. Second. Okay. <clears throat> motion by Council Member Campion, second by Vice Mayor Cruz to appoint um, Council Member Campy, um, Council Member Molson to the <laughs> Public Safety <laughs> Committee. <laughs> Call for the vote. Vice Mayor Cruz. Aye. Council Member Molson. Aye. Council Member Campion. Aye. Council Member Lampson. Aye. Mayor Hewer. Aye. Passes 5 0 vote. Comments by staff. Mr. Winkler. 
Uh, just one update. Uh, just today, I received the report on our water conservation for the month of December, which, as you remember, was extraordinarily dry. And so uh, compared to the two base years of December 2013 and December 2014, we only achieved a 13 percent water savings. But actually, considering the absolute lack of rainfall, that's uh, actually still pretty good. And uh, so we're we're continuing to encourage residents, even in the winter, to conserve water. It's harder in the winter to hit targets because it's primarily indoor water usage, and uh, it's a little tougher to cut back on those uses sometimes. But uh, uh, we encourage residents to keep up the good work. Mr. Rice? Uh, yeah, just a couple updates on the annexations. Uh, for Eastview, as you know, that's in the city limits now. We are uh, continuing to work with uh, SunCal, the developer. We're talking to them about financing uh, infrastructure, and they're actively working on their conditions of approval, so that's a good sign. They're uh, being aggressive and moving forward. Uh, the industrial annexation, we did get comments back on the application. They were relatively light, so we were kind of excited. Uh, the tax sharing agreement still needs to go to Sac County before uh, they can schedule <coughs> At for LAFCO board, but we're kind of excited that uh, we think we can get that thing moving forward pretty quickly. Okay. And then that's it. Ms. Boyd? And nothing further, thank you. Ms. Hall? Mr. Solis? Chief Stockman? My only comment is, is that uh, yesterday we had the five-year anniversary of Officer Kevin, Don Kevin Ton's uh, line of duty death. And uh, I just want to thank all the community and the council and staff and uh, the staff in the police department uh, for all the hard work uh, for putting that event on. And uh, I can only venture to say that the uh, family was very touched and pleased by the uh, the event. Um, it was it was it was a tremendous day, and I and I I can't express enough how pleased I am and how successful that whole day was uh, to honor that family so and for uh, officer Kevin Ton so thank you all for being there I have nothing further thank you okay. moving on mr. Campion. Ms. Lampson I would like to congratulate Armando Solis for being the Galt Herald Person of the Year, and we have Gail Weber here also, who is the Volunteer of the Year. So thank you for your service. High five. And that's it. Mr. Molson? I have nothing. Vice Mayor Cruz? I have nothing as well. Okay, seeing none, we adjourn.